Do you believe it's possible to escape death? Think again. In the next few minutes, I'm going to unveil astonishing biblical secrets about three characters who defied the unimaginable. They never died. And yes, this goes beyond any conventional belief. Discover how a daring prophet, an ancient father, and a few chosen ones in the end, times altered the rules of the game. This is not just an old story. It's a revelation that could transform your perspective on life and death. Get ready to have your mind opened and your faith challenged like never before. Stay with me and watch the unbelievable become reality. Three individuals in the Bible who never died. First, let's talk about Elijah. During one of the most tumultuous periods in Israel's history, God summoned this remarkable prophet. At that time, Israel was under the rule of Ahab, one of the most wicked monarchs in its history. Elijah, hailing from Tishbe in the region of Gilead, located beyond the Jordan River, stood out as one of the most prominent figures among the prophets of Israel. The biblical narrative, particularly in the Book of Kings, pays unique attention to his journey, surpassing in significance many of the kings themselves, despite the absence of a book dedicated exclusively to him. His most famous deed was undoubtedly the epic confrontation with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, an event that immortalized him in the memory of the people. King Ahab, in turn, had blended human idealisms into a system that, by divine right, should have been guided according to God's plans, given that the Israelites were his chosen people. The result of this misguided governance was an Israel suffering under ineffective leadership. Contrasting this, Elijah emerged as a standard bearer of a different kind of leadership. Far from the influences of the political elite and the royal family, he possessed the unique ability to speak truths to earthly power, never being seduced or corrupted by it. Elijah was thus a bold figure, an indefatigable defender of truth, regardless of the might or status of those in power. He symbolized a kingdom not of this world, a realm with divine and transcendent purposes. Elijah, who already seemed to have lived through a series of almost unbelievable adventures, still had surprises in store. He was about to experience something even more extraordinary, escaping death. His departure from this world without experiencing death places him in an extremely rare category of biblical figures. Although the biblical account does not detail when or how God accomplished this feat, it is evident from the context that he revealed to Elijah about his imminent earthly farewell. God also shared this revelation with the sons of the prophets and with Elisha, his close friend and God-appointed successor, whose story unfolds in 2 Kings 2, 1-12. As we approach Elijah's last day on earth, a scene brimming with significance and mystery unfolds. It was the moment when Elijah would be whisked away to heaven in a whirlwind, an event of heavenly proportions. This Hebrew expression, which can also be interpreted as in a gust or in a windy moment, suggests a sudden and powerful occurrence where in an enveloping instant, Elijah would be elevated to the heavens, leaving the earthly realm to meet with the divine presence. The preparation for this transcendental moment was evident as God had not only informed Elijah about what would occur, but also about how and where it would happen. This explains the urgency with which we see Elijah heading toward the Jordan, a significant movement in the prophet's final journey. As we dive into the biblical narrative, it's almost as if we could visualize this epic scene unfolding before us. In 2 Kings 2-2-6, we find words filled with symbolism and emotion. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha, determined and faithful, replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down together to Bethel. In this setting, the sons of the prophets from Bethel, recognizing the imminence of the moment, approach Elisha and ask him, 
Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? Elisha's response marked by calmness and resignation is, Yes, I know. Keep silent about it. Once again, Elijah tries to persuade Elisha to stay, this time in Jericho. However, Elisha, demonstrating unwavering loyalty, insists, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And so they proceed to Jericho, walking together toward the climax of this extraordinary biblical story. The narrative about Elijah's final moments on earth is deeply symbolic and full of spiritual meanings. As Elijah and Elisha continue their journey, the sons of the prophets, both in Jericho and Bethel, pose the same inquiry to Elisha. Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? Elisha's response, maintaining a posture of respect and reverence, is always the same. Yes, I know. Now please be silent. This reflects a recognition of the magnitude of what was about to happen, as well as a profound serenity in the face of the inevitable. Gilgal, the starting point of Elijah's final journey, is a place steeped in history and meaning. As recounted in Joshua 4, Gilgal was the first encampment of the children of Israel after crossing the Jordan during their triumphant entry into Canaan. This place represented a moment of safety and preparation before facing the challenges that lay ahead in conquering enemy territory. For Elijah, Gilgal symbolized the beginning of his last and most significant journey. The next stage of Elijah's journey was Bethel, a site imbued with an atmosphere of prayer and communion with the divine. Bethel, meaning house of God, is a place rich in spiritual symbolism, representing a space for encountering the sacred. Finally, Elijah's journey takes him to the Jordan. This location is emblematic not just as a physical border, but also as a place of spiritual passage. The Jordan in this context symbolizes a place of death, not just physical death, but also the death of the ego, a place where the old is left behind and the new is embraced. It is in this symbolically charged setting that Elijah prepares for his final moment on earth, an event that would mark not just the end of his earthly journey, but also the beginning of a new phase in Israel's spiritual history. Arriving at the Jordan, the final stage of his earthly mission, Elijah faces a crucial moment alongside Elisha. Elisha's determination to accompany Elijah to the end is evident in his words. As surely as the Lord lives, I will not leave you. Elisha's insistence on staying by Elijah's side, despite Elijah's attempts to distance himself since Gilgal, reveals not just loyalty, but also Elisha's readiness to assume his future role as successor. Elijah, in testing Elisha, was in fact preparing him for the challenges that lay ahead. The climax of this journey occurs by the Jordan, where an extraordinary miracle unfolds. The narrative in 2 Kings 2, 7 to 10 describes this moment with rich detail. 50 men from the sons of the prophets watch from a distance as Elijah, with his cloak, performs a miraculous act. He strikes the waters of the Jordan, which part, allowing both to cross on dry ground. This act mirrors the miracle that occurred centuries earlier when God parted the Red Sea for Moses and the children of Israel. After crossing the Jordan, Elijah turns to Elisha with a question of great significance. Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha, aware of the magnitude of the moment, makes a bold request. Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Elijah's response to this request is both a promise and a challenge. You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me as I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. This dialogue between Elijah and Elisha on the banks of the Jordan is not just a prelude to Elijah's departure, but also a moment of mantle passing where the spirit and mission of Elijah are about to be transferred to Elisha. 
the parting of the Jordan's waters and the subsequent conversation between the two prophets are laden with symbolism and meaning, marking a pivotal moment in Israel's history and the continuation of the prophetic legacy. Elijah's ascent to heaven is one of the most spectacular and iconic moments in the Bible. In 2 Kings 2.11, the description of Elijah being taken up to heaven in a whirlwind after the appearance of a chariot of fire and horses of fire is strikingly vivid. They were simply walking and talking, not amidst preaching or prophecy, but in intimate communion, like two close friends. The sudden divine manifestation, with the appearance of the chariot and fire horses, marks the climax of Elijah's earthly journey, a transition marked not just by visual spectacle, but also by profound spiritual significance. Elisha's reaction, as related in 2 Kings 2, 12-15, is intensely human and moving. Witnessing Elijah's ascension, Elisha expresses his mourning and respect, tearing his own clothes. He then picks up Elijah's fallen cloak, a symbol of the prophetic mantle passed to him, and upon returning to the Jordan, demonstrates his spiritual inheritance by repeating the miracle of parting the waters using Elijah's cloak. This symbolic act is a powerful testimony to the sons of the prophets, who observed from Jericho, leading them to recognize that the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. The biblical narrative here underscores an important principle the continuity of divine purpose, regardless of the physical presence of its servants. The transition from Elijah to Elisha is a representation of God's unceasing and unfailing plan. Elisha, though initially stunned by Elijah's departure, quickly assumes the prophet's mantle and begins his own ministry. This passage reminds us that God always has a plan and chosen people to carry forward his work in every era. God's work doesn't end with the departure of a servant. On the contrary, it continues and is renewed through others who are called and equipped for the mission. The exit of Elijah and the entrance of Elisha are a vivid testament to the perpetuity and sovereignty of the divine plan. Number two, Enoch. Enoch represents a unique and fascinating figure in the biblical narrative, especially for his distinct role and destiny. The story of Enoch, found mainly in Genesis chapter 5, stands out among biblical genealogies, not just for his lineage, but also for his remarkable relationship with God. Enoch, distinct from the Enoch who was Cain's son, emerges in the context of the generations from Adam. Genesis 5.21 marks a significant moment in his life. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah, Methuselah, as we know, is recognized as the oldest man recorded in the scriptures. More than that, Enoch is Noah's great-grandfather, placing him in a genealogical context of great relevance. The book of Jude in the New Testament also mentions Enoch, specifically in verse 14, where he is described as the seventh from Adam. This reference highlights Enoch's prophetic role, mentioning his warning about the forthcoming judgment of the Lord. This passage underscores Enoch's importance not just as an ancestor, but also as a man who, amidst the moral decay of his time, maintained an intimate and devout relationship with God. Enoch stands out in the scriptures for his exemplary life of faith and communion with God. In an era dominated by sin and rebellion, Enoch consistently and dedicatedly walked with God. His testimony teaches us the importance of living for an audience of one, God, and seeking a constant and intimate fellowship with the Creator. Genesis 5, 18, 24 details the longevity of Jared, Enoch's father, and the continuation of the lineage up to the birth of Methuselah. The text emphasizes Enoch's habitual communion with God for 300 years following Methuselah's birth culminating in a total of 365 years of life. The description of Enoch as someone who walked with God and who was no longer found among men because God took him to be with him is deeply symbolic and suggests a unique spiritual transition, often interpreted as the first recorded rapture. 
The idea that Enoch's communion with God was so intense that it led to a direct and immediate union with the divine is a concept that continues to inspire and intrigue scholars and believers for generations. Enoch's portrayal in the book of Hebrews powerfully resonates with the message of faith and devotion. Hebrews 11, 5 to 6 highlights the exceptional nature of Enoch's relationship with God, emphasizing that by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. The mention that before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God is significant. It shows that Enoch not only lived in communion with God, but also achieved such a profound level of divine satisfaction that he was rewarded in an extraordinary manner. The passage from Hebrews also underscores a fundamental principle of faith, the impossibility of pleasing God without faith. It reinforces the idea that drawing near to God requires belief in his existence and trust in his reward for those who earnestly seek him. In 2 Chronicles 16 to 9, the Bible reminds us that the Lord's eyes are always searching to strengthen those whose hearts are fully his. This passage emphasizes the importance of a genuine and unpretentious relationship with God. It's a reminder that while God desires to bless and nurture the growth of his followers, he also seeks an honest and authentic response to divine love. John 4, 23, 24 echoes this thought, highlighting the arrival of a time when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. God, being a spirit, requires that worship be conducted on a spiritual and authentic level beyond formalities and external appearances. Thus, Enoch represents not just a biblical figure of great faith, but also a living example of the power of true worship and sincere communion with God. His life and translation, Rapture, serve as a powerful symbol of the ultimate redemption awaiting those who put their faith in the Lord. Enoch's story gives us hope and reminds us that despite physical mortality, there is a final victory over death for believers, a promise of eternal redemption. Number three, the Christians in the end times. The prophecy of the rapture of Christians in the end times, as described in 1 Thessalonians 4:13 to 18, is one of the central doctrines of Christian eschatology. This passage addresses the belief that in the end times there will be a rapture where all Christians, both those who have died and those who are alive, will be reunited with Christ. The passage from Thessalonians emphasizes the importance of the comfort and hope this belief provides to believers. The Apostle Paul assures Christians that they should not grieve like those who have no hope, for faith in Christ brings the promise of resurrection and eternal reunion. The idea that the dead in Christ will rise first, followed by those who are alive and remain on the earth, reflects a belief in the final victory over death and the promise of eternal life with God. This prophecy suggests that just as Enoch was taken up to heaven without seeing death, there will be a group of believers in the end times who will also experience a rapture without undergoing physical death. Enoch, therefore, serves as a prefigurative figure or a type of this future generation. The rapture is described as a glorious and triumphant event. The Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. This event will be both a manifestation of divine power and a joyous reunion of all believers with Christ. The teaching of the rapture serves as a source of hope and encouragement for Christians, reaffirming faith in God's sovereignty and the promise of eternal salvation. In summary, the belief in the rapture of Christians in the end times is seen as the fulfillment of God's promise of redemption and eternal life, a belief that has inspired and sustained the Christian faith across generations. We've just explored together mysteries that challenge common understanding about life, death, and the unfathomable power of faith. What if I told you there are more secrets like these waiting to be uncovered? On our channel, each video is a journey towards the extraordinary, challenging what you thought you knew and opening doors to the unimaginable. If you felt a shiver of curiosity, 
a hunger for more knowledge, don't hesitate to subscribe now. Like, comment with your thoughts, and share this video. With every share, you help enlighten another mind. Together, we'll unravel more mysteries waiting at the intersection of faith, history, and the unknown. See you in the next video, where we'll continue this incredible journey of discovery.